The various hero archetypes are all known for their fusion monsters, so there's a lot of them between the five or six different kinds of hero cards. And in this list, we'll go over the top 10 best hero fusions. And at number 10, we have Elemental Hero Sunriser. This card is technically not in the TCG yet, otherwise it would have probably been higher on this list, as this card will definitely see play in most hero decks in the future. Now, this card requires any two hero monsters with different attributes as its materials, which is great since most hero decks use a variety of different kinds of heroes, instead of just destiny heroes or elemental heroes or vision heroes, etc, etc. And this card has three effects. The first is that all of your monsters gain 200 attack for each different attribute you control when it's summoned. Also, when this card is special summoned, you can add one miracle fusion from your deck to your hand. And when an attack is declared involving another hero monster, you can target and destroy one card on the field. Now, the attack gain effect is a minor bonus, which does combo well with one of the other cards on this list, but the ability to add Miracle Fusion directly from your deck to your hand on summon is super good. Before Sunriser, there wasn't really a convenient way to search out Miracle Fusion, despite the fact that Miracle Fusion was the reason hero decks saw play during the early days of the game because it was such a good fusion card. Because what Miracle Fusion does is it allows you to fusion summon an elemental hero fusion monster by using materials from your graveyard, and Miracle Fusion was the first archetype specific card that did this, which has become kind of the standard with archetype specific fusions after the fact. And even then, Miracle Fusion is still good to this day, as it allows you to use materials you probably would have just sent to the graveyard this turn as materials to bring out another card. And basically it was a one card big fusion monster. So, being able to search out Miracle Fusion with Sunriser basically gives you another fusion summon that turn for almost free. So it's almost always worth it to go into that card since it can search out Miracle Fusion. And its bonus destroy a card while declaring an attack is just kind of the cherry on top. That's also a good effect on top of its other good effect and easy summoning condition. And at number 9 we have Destiny Hero Dangerous, a card that is actually in the TCG currently and is pretty heavily played in hero decks. Now, this card basically sees play because Fusion Destiny exists, and Fusion Destiny is a really good fusion spell card that allows you to use materials from your deck in order to bring out a fusion monster, which is the absolute best place to use fusion materials from, I might add. With the only drawbacks of Fusion Destiny is that it only works on Destiny Hero monsters. The card is destroyed during the next end phase, and it locks you out of summoning monsters except dark hero monsters for the rest of the turn. Luckily, there are a lot of good dark hero monsters in the game, as you'll see as we continue on in this list. Now, part of the reason Destiny Hero Dangerous sees so much play is because it's materials, where it just requires one Destiny Hero monster plus any one dark effect monster. So, if you bring this card out with Fusion Destiny, you can send a Destiny Hero Malicious, and one of the many many good dark monsters that have graveyard effects to the graveyard, like a Destrudo, for example, or just another hero monster, like Evil Hero Sinister Necrom. And its effect on the field is also not half bad, as it has a quick effect where you can discard a card in order to send one Destiny Hero monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard in order to increase the attack of your Destiny Hero monsters by 200 for each Destiny Hero monster in your graveyard until the end of the turn. Which again, Destiny Hero Malicious is a great target for this as well, as with Destiny Hero Malicious at 3 copies per deck, getting 1 in the graveyard allows you to go plus 2 in card advantage. There's also Destiny Hero Celestial, which allows you to go plus 2 in card advantage if you use its graveyard effect. And to a lesser extent, there's even Destiny Hero Dynatag, who can remove itself from the graveyard to increase the attack of a Destiny Hero monster you control which is a little bit more useful, as we'll go into the next spot on this list. But suffice to say, Destiny Hero Dangerous is a great way to get monsters in the graveyard, as there are a lot of good monsters to send to the graveyard with this card's effect in Fusion Destiny. And at number 8, we have Destiny Hero Dystopia. This is another Destiny Hero Fusion monster, which just requires any two Destiny Hero monsters as its materials which means you can use Fusion Destiny to just send a Malicious and a Celestial from your deck to the graveyard in order to get two good graveyard effects going for you. Or even a Destiny Hero Dynatag, as what Destiny Hero Dystopia does 
is when this card is special summoned, it does a little bit of burn damage equal to the attack of a level 4 lower Destiny Hero monster in your graveyard. And it has a quick effect, where if this card's current attack is different from its original attack, you can destroy one card in the field. And if you do this, this card's attack will be set back to its original attack. But you can only do this once per turn. So, cards like Destiny Hero Dynatag, which can be sent to the graveyard directly from the deck with Fusion Destiny in order to bring this card out, can increase its card's attack by 1000 with its graveyard effect in order to allow it to destroy a card on the field. Its effect can also be procced with Destiny Hero Dangerous, increasing the attack of all of your Destiny Hero monsters when it uses its effect. As being able to destroy any one card on the field on a quick effect is good on pretty much any monster. So basically, because Fusion Destiny exists, Destiny Hero Dystopia and Destiny Hero Dangerous see a lot of play in hero decks because that fusion spell card is so good, and they have great graveyard effect monsters that combo well with those two fusion monsters, despite the fact that there are stronger Destiny Hero fusion monsters in the game. They just don't really see play over these two because they're much more combo friendly than those big boss monsters. And at number 7, we have Vision Hero Adoration. Now, this is a dark hero monster which just requires any two hero monsters as materials, and that's basically why this card sees play. As what its effect is, is you can have one of your opponent's monsters lose attack and defense equal to the attack of one of your other hero monsters, which is an okay effect, but it doesn't really seem like something that's better than Destiny Hero Dystopia or Sunriser, and that's because it's not. As, like I said a little bit earlier, the only reason this card sees play is because it requires any two hero monsters as its materials, and because it's a dark hero monster. Which means it's real easy to bring out with a plethora of fusion support cards, and it can be brought out under the limitations of fusion destiny, which locks you into only being able to special summon dark hero monsters for the rest of the turn. So, this card can be brought out with super polymerization during the battle phase in order to attack for more damage, it's a target for mass change into the number one spot on this list, and is a target for getting any two of your hero monsters into the graveyard with a polymerization. And there are a lot of good hero monsters with graveyard effects. So, because this card is super generic with its materials and is a dark monster, it sees playing pretty much every hero deck, and its effects and everything else don't really matter about it. So, the fact that it does have a decently high attack and an okay effect is just kind of a bonus. And at number 6, we have Vision Hero Trinity, who is on this list for basically the same reason as Vision Hero Adoration. Vision Hero Trinity is a dark hero fusion monster who can be brought out with any three hero monsters as its materials, but this card actually does have a useful effect, where during the turn it's fusion summoned, its attack is doubled to 5000, and this card can attack three times during the battle phase, with the only restriction is that it can't attack directly. So, if your opponent has three monsters on their side of the field, with 2300 attack or less each, this card can inflict 8000 points of battle damage by attacking over all three of them, as it has the potential to inflict 15000 points of battle damage if it attacks three face-up zero attack position monsters. So it has the potential to win you games, while also having pretty much all of the same benefits as Vision Hero Adoration being able to be summoned under the limitations of Fusion Destiny, being able to fuse all of your other cards during the battle phase with a super polymerization, being a mass change target, using regular polymerization to bring it out in order to get hero monsters in the grave, and the potential to OTK your opponent on its own. So if anything, Vision Hero Trinity is one of the better hero fusion monsters in the game, only surpassed by the next 5 spots because they're even better. And at number 5, we have Elemental Hero The Shining. This is the first Omni Hero on this list, and really, pretty much all of the other Omni Heroes see a decent amount of play. Omni Heroes are referring to the 6 Elemental Hero Fusion Monsters, whose materials to be fusion summoned are just one other hero monster plus one monster of their attribute. And a big reason the Omni Heroes see play is because of Super Polymerization which will basically allow you to use any one of your opponent's monsters as one of its materials, as long as you just have one of all the attributes of Omni Heroes in your extra deck. And Elemental Hero The Shining is the Omni Hero of the Light attribute, as it just requires one Elemental Hero plus any one Light monster as its materials, 
and it also has a decent effect that combos very well with Miracle Fusion, as this card gains 300 attack for each of your Banish Elemental Hero monsters. And if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add two of your Banish Elemental Hero monsters to your hand. Although this floating effect can miss timing, but that's because this card is a little bit on the older side. Now, since line attribute monsters are one of the more plentiful in the game, this card is great to have in your extra deck if you're playing Super Polymerization in a hero deck, so that you can steal one of your opponent's monsters for its summon. There's also a lot of good light attribute monsters, which can be used with Miracle Fusion to bring this card out, who, if it's destroyed, can add its materials back to your hand. Going plus one off of its destruction is a pretty good floating effect, as long as it doesn't miss its timing, of course. For those of you who don't know what missing the timing means, it's a complicated ruling in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I'll try to explain it real quickly. Basically, if a card has an optional effect when it's sent to the graveyard, as in you can choose to say yes or no to its effect, then you have to check for one little thing in its sentence. If the sentence starts with an if or a when. If the sentence on the optional effect starts with an if, then the effect can't miss its timing because of rules, basically. But if the sentence starts with a when, then the effect can miss the timing if something else happens in a chain after the effect was supposed to take place, as it needs to happen immediately for you be able to choose whether or not you want to use it. Otherwise, you miss the timing of it because of rules. And since Elemental Hero the Shining has a when optional effect, that means it can miss the timing if it's destroyed and then something else happens immediately after. Like if it's destroyed in a chain link 2 or something. So, that's one of the reasons this card doesn't see very much play today, with the other reason being that most modern hero decks are very dark based because of Fusion Destiny. Although once Sunriser comes out, I can totally see Shining seeing more play, and it's already a decent super polymerization target as well. And at number 4, we have another Omni Hero, this time Elemental Hero Absolute Zero. Out of all of the Omni Heroes, Absolute Zero is the only one which requires any one hero monster plus its attribute, instead of specifically an Elemental Hero, like with The Shining. So, because of that requirement, Absolute Zero still sees play even today with the very dark attribute nature of most hero decks, because they can use any of the hero monsters as its material, and it can potentially steal any of your opponent's water monsters with super polymerization. And because it has a really good effect, where if this card just leaves the field in any way, you destroy all of your opponent's monsters. So, if your opponent destroys this card by battle, destroys it by card effect, bounces it, banishes it, or returns it to the deck, its floating effect will activate to destroy all of your opponent's monsters. This effect is also not once per turn, and you can just activate it yourself if you have something like World Legacy Clash to banish it from your side of the field, and then return it during the end phase. Basically, the effect to destroy all of your opponent's monsters is really good, and the fact that it's so easy to activate this effect makes this card really good. And this was the first ever Omni Hero to be released, so it really set the standard high for the remainder Omni Heroes. And Absolute Zero was so good, it kind of blew all the other hero fusion monsters out of the water when it was first released, and kind of forced hero decks to play a lot of water monsters in their deck going forward, just so they'd have access to Absolute Zero. So since this card basically saw play ever since it was released, and even still sees play today, even though hero decks are all about dark monsters now, that should go to show you something about how good this card was and is. And at number 3, we have a card that I'm sure a lot of Duel Links players will recognize, and that's Masked Hero Anki. Now, this is a Mask Hero card, which can only be special summoned by the Mask Change Quick Play spell card, or one of its variants, where all you need is one hero monster that shares this card's attribute, and that one Mask Change card, which can be used during the battle phase after that monster has already attacked, so that you can attack again with Masked Hero Anki, who, if it attacks over a monster, has the effect where it can add a Change Quick Play spell card from your deck to your hand which will allow you to activate another mass change on Anki to bring out another Anki from your extra deck if you wish, to attack over another monster, which can search out another mass change to bring out another Anki, to attack again, and so on and so on, as its effect is not once per turn. Alternatively, this card can attack directly at the cost of just having this card's attack, basically, to 1400. In a game like Duel Links, where the starting life points is 4000, Anki was really overpowered in that game, 
and they had to nerf a lot of the hero monsters that allow this card to come out easier in order to kind of rein in the deck. In normal Yu-Gi-Oh, this card also sees a lot of play, but not for the same reasons that I just described. It basically sees play because it's a decent target for mass change that can search out another mass change if it attacks over something, but also because this is a dark hero monster. So you can use it alongside Fusion Destiny, and because you can use mass change on this card in order to go into the number one card on this list, which I'll talk about in a bit. And at number two, we have Masked Hero Acid. I should probably give you a little spoiler, the top three cards in this list are all Mass Change monsters. Because Mass Change is a one card fusion, which gives it a pretty good advantage over normal fusions, and it just happens to be that some of the Masked Heroes also have really good effects, as the early Masked Hero monsters definitely weren't very good and saw no competitive play. That was until Masked Hero Acid was added to the game, as it was the first good Masked Hero monster introduced which has the effect that when it's special summoned, you can destroy all of your opponent's spell or trap cards, and then all of your opponent's monsters lose 300 attack. The second effect is kind of a bonus. It's the first effect that is really good, as it allows you to turn any water monster into a Harpy's Feather Duster on legs with 2600 attack. And if you use Mass Change on Absolute Zero, you can destroy all of your opponent's monsters and then all of their spell and trap cards, while still keeping Mass Hero Acid on the field. Basically, being able to destroy all of your opponent's spell or trap cards is a super good effect, and it's also kind of a rare effect because it's so good, and being able to do it easily as Masked Hero Acid is why this is one of the better hero monsters in the game, second only to the best hero monster in the game. Partly because of the best hero monster in the game, actually. I'm not sure if this would be the number two on this list if it wasn't for the number one card existing, in the same way where Anki definitely wouldn't be at number 3 on this list if it wasn't for the number 1 card. And at number 1, we have Masked Hero Dark Law. A hero fusion monster that's so good that it single-handedly kept heroes a viable deck ever since it was released, and is the hero fusion monster people think about when talking about modern hero decks. Masked Hero Dark Law is another Masked Hero monster, which can be summoned in the exact same way as Masked Hero Anki just any Dark Hero monster plus Mass Change. And what Mass Hero Dark Law does is, while this card is on the field, all cards sent to your opponent's graveyard are banished instead. So it's basically like a one-sided macro cosmos, a card that's currently limited on the ban list because it's a really good floodgate slash anti-meta card. And it also has another effect, where if your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, you can then banish one random card from your opponent's hand. So it actively punishes your opponent for searching things out of their deck, which is something that's done in pretty much every single average meta deck, and is basically like a requirement of a deck being good, having a lot of ways to search out cards from your deck. So with two really good effects, being a dark hero monster who combos well with all the good hero support, or I guess I should say most of the hero support likes to be dark hero monsters because of Dark Law and it's easy to bring out with mass change, plus any dark hero monster. The only real downside to this card is that it kind of has low attack at 2400, but it's also kind of hard for your opponent to set up a board when all of their cards are being banished and cards are getting sniped from their hand when they're trying to search out their combo pieces. Basically, the only reason Masked Hero Anki sees play in normal Yu-Gi-Oh! is because it can be tagged out if Dark Law is about to be destroyed by something with mass change and because it can search out mass change by destroying a monster, which can then be used on Anki to go into Dark Law. And also, the only reason Masked Hero Acid sees so much play is because people are playing mass change in their hero decks, so they might as well play a really good one like Masked Hero Acid as well, in order to clear out their opponent's back row. And Dark Law is such a good single card that some decks even occasionally use mass change too, just to play Masked Hero Dark Law in their non-hero decks, as Mass Change 2 allows you to discard a card in order to basically use any dark attribute monster you control to bring out Dark Law, instead of a hero dark monster specifically. So, it allows access to Mass Hero Dark Law to non-hero decks, which makes them better because Mass Hero Dark Law is just that good. And that's why Mass Hero Dark Law easily takes number one spot on this list, as he's kind of the face of hero fusion monsters. 
and is the only hero fusion monster that sees competitive play in non-hero decks as well. Alright, and that's the end of the list. If you think I missed any other better hero fusion monsters, that's probably true because I did leave off a couple of the Omni heroes and one of the mass change cards. Or if you have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.